guys, we're done talking. Well, we're going to move on to our very first presenter, and this is someone, I tell you, I'm a bit of a fanboy about. Our first presenter, presenter is Dr. Pamela Gay. She's an astronomer. She's a professor. She's a writer. She's a director. See if I can use Brendan Fraser. She's a writer. Uh, she's the Director of Technology and Citizen Science at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. And she is the co-founder of the CosmoQuest community of citizen scientists. But I know her best as a podcaster, as the host of Astronomy Cast. But through CosmoQuest.org, Dr. Gay works to engage people like you and me, people who are excited about science, but don't necessarily have a science education in both learning and doing science. Through CosmoQuest, you can join thousands of other everyday folks like you and I by mapping our solar system in unprecedented detail with their citizen science projects. Through Astronomy Cast, Dr. Gay and her host, Fraser Kane, take listeners on a fact-based journey through the our cosmos, exploring not only what we know, but how we know the universe we find ourselves in. I've been listening to Astronomy Cast now for the last nine years. Yeah, nine years. It was one of the very first podcasts I had on one of the very first iPods. Science, am I right? <laughs> Over the years and after hundreds of episodes, Dr. Gay has ignited my curiosity, and both her and Fraser hold a very special place in my heart. Dr. Gay is my Carl Sagan and my Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah! She was the one who rekindled my curiosity and fascination with science. Not as a child, but instead as an adult in my early 30s. And it is with immense respect and great pleasure that I introduce you to Dr. Pamela Gay. Thank you so much, Eric. So I'm not as coordinated as him, so I need to use a mic stand. Now, I, I need to start by saying I'm here as an individual. My words are my own. I represent no company, no government, no sponsor. I'm here speaking my mind and my opinions. I'm here to speak my truth. Like I think all of us are here today. It's Earth Day. Now, I have to admit, when I was a kid, this was not a holiday I knew about. I, I first learned about it my freshman year in high school when my geometry teacher made me write a term paper. And I was angry because what did the earth have to do with geometry? <laughs> I was a kid. But Earth Day didn't sink in. And, and I didn't really think about it again until 2009 when during the International Year of Astronomy on Earth Day we asked everyone to please turn off your lights for just one hour, just one hour on Earth Day so that people might see the stars. Think about that. We allowed the world one hour to see the stars. Earth Day is, is just one of those days most people don't mark on their calendar. For the most part, it's a holiday that's largely ignored here in the U.S. It lacks the commercial tie-ins of cards and candy that we have for Valentine's Day and Easter. It, it's missing the drinking and parades of St. Patrick's Day. No, Earth Day, this day, is not a day of consumerism that marketing machines can get behind and help us remember to celebrate. Earth Day is a celebrate of, celebration of our planet and the science that is used to study it and the conservation that is needed to help humanity and our ecosystem survive. Our economy should care about Earth Day, but right now it doesn't, and we need to change that. In 1970, Heinz, Adens Heinz founded Earth Day and encouraged peaceful protests like this one to demand environmental reform. 
Today, 47 years later, we're here to recognize that understanding our world and its place in the universe requires not just Earth science, but all science. Earth Day has become our day, a day to march for science and demand better for ourselves and better for our world. We demand that science be supported through excellent educational opportunities and through sufficient federal funds that our scientists have the freedom to try new things, to experiment, and to not fear sometimes failing as they push our understanding of the universe we share. We demand open access to their results. And we demand that when scientific discoveries necessitate changes in human behavior, science-based policies and regulations get put in place and enforced. We demand this for our society, for all peoples in all their diverse and wonderful forms. I, I was born after Apollo. I, I started high school as the Iron Curtain fell. My youth in a field dominated by Apollo generation scientists gives me a disheartening perspective. In my life, I, I have watched as our society has grown complacent about our so-called leadership in science. After all, I, I hear from my seniors, we won the race to the moon. We are winning in the Nobel Prize count. The best and brightest from around the world are all coming to the U.S. to go to university. We are winning. No, we were winning. In 2016, none of the seven science-related Nobel Prizes went to an American. In 2015, it was one in eight. Since 2000, only 38 of the 130 science prizes went to U.S.-born scientists. Since 2011, U.S. astronauts have traveled to and from the space station on Russian capsules because we lack our own spacecraft. Students who come here for education are returning home, and American-born scientists, including Nobel Prize winner Brian Schmidt, are leaving the U.S. to seek better opportunities elsewhere. There are reasons people are leaving. It is getting harder and harder for scientists in the U.S. to get needed funding to do research, and we must change that. Grant funding rates at the National Institutes for Health have dropped from 35% in 1978 to just 17%. At NASA, we're seeing just tw under 25% of our grant submissions get funded. In my field of astronomy, We've seen National Science Foundation funding rates fall from 35% to less than 15% since 2000. What this means is that in my field, for every six grants submitted, maybe one, maybe one is funded. Every unfunded grant means students who won't have a job doing science. It means professors who won't have a summer salary, who won't have a salary their entire year. For early career research researchers, it means scientists who won't science, who won't be able to have their career. Failure to have better funding for science means medical trials that won't be done. It means satellites to monitor our planet that won't be launched, and technology that will never be pioneered. Lack of funding means lack of science. We demand change. We demand the restoration of federal funds for research in all fields. But this isn't just about America. When Earth Day was founded, celebrations were held at 2,000 colleges and universities at around 10,000 schools and in hundreds of communities across the nation. And that sounds amazing until you realize that last year, celebrations had spread to 192 nations and it included over a billion people. If it takes a village to 
raise a child, it takes a global community to raise our understanding of science. Some breakthroughs require a unique mix of creativity, of genius, and inspiration that might only be found in one person in a generation. And we can't know what village or city that child will come from. We need all children everywhere to be able to be part of learning and doing science. We all know of the young Jewish refugee who escaped Nazi Germany after his property was seized and his books were burned. His name was Einstein, and he gave us relativity, a field of science necessary for GPS and so much more. Some of you may know of Chandrasekhar, an astronomer whose theories let us understand that matter at high densities changes form, and our largest stars have the ability to collapse down to be as small as our moon, or even as small as Manhattan. He made this discovery while on a boat from his homeland in India to England to go to graduate school. Let that sink in. Young Chandrasekhar only had his undergraduate degree when he redefined the possible forms of matter. Each of these men changed our understanding of the universe in a fundamental way. They changed our understanding of the shape of space and the possible structures of reality. Neither man could have fully succeeded in their homeland. Einstein probably would have been killed. Chandrasekhar just wouldn't have had the same educational access he was able to have by moving to England. It was because the global science community recognized their talents and found places for them to strive forward that they were able to thrive. And we must continue to make space, make room for the refugees and for those who seek educational opportunities to come and do science. We must facilitate everyone being able to advance science. This nurturing isn't available to everyone. In reviewing the list of Nobel Prize winning scientists, I found that since 2000, only six women and no blacks or Hispanics had won. There was one fellow from India, several Pakistanians, but largely it was a white and Asian male list of names. This lack of diversity at the highest levels is mirrored throughout our fields. For instance, we saw less than 500 blacks receive PhDs in physics between 1972 and 2012. Less than 500. These individuals represented less than 2% of all physics PhDs. Women, they made up just 10% of the degrees. Black women, there were 36. 36 out of 25,000. Because of bias in the system. Great, what great discoveries never happened because the wrong little girl was told, why don't you go take advanced placed English instead of being encouraged to take the math she loved? That happened to me. How many other people didn't become great scientists because they listened to that advice? What medical breakthrough was missed because the black child was told, well, maybe they should focus on sports? We have a society, we have as a society lost, lost science, lost the ability to make advancements because we have built walls that are just too hard for too many to cross. We need to increase diversity, we need to increase inclusion. We need to make science someplace where all come and all are welcomed. Science, the methods by which we understand our reality, and the means by which we develop medicine and technology, science needs to be welcoming to all people, all nations, all races, and all genders. We 
God here on this 47th Earth Day to demand that science be recognized as necessary for understanding our reality. To acknowledge that while scientists may falter, science is the means of getting at the truth. The truth of where we come from, how did life evolve on Earth, and how will it all someday end? Science, science is our only hope if we want to stop climate change, if we want to head off the spread of antibiotic-resistant drugs, and antibiotic-resistant diseases, rather, and if we want to simply find ways to produce enough food that hunger stops being a concern. Science is the only way to advance our society. For science to advance, we need scientists. We must train our children in the ways of science. They must be given the chance to learn to reason and to use observations to understand our world. They, they need to come to understand the ideas of why apples fall and why the moon orbits our planet and be taught that this is the same thing, this is the same force called gravity. They must become problem solvers who aren't told to just sit down, be quiet, and stop asking questions. They must be told to always question and always seek the truth. Our education system is far from perfect. And with education, we must do more than just supply books and labs with technology. We must also work to overcome biases in the system and actively welcome children of all backgrounds into our classes. It is not enough to say all are welcome. We must make all welcome in science. In mid-March, a group of five minority students, two African American and three Latino, won their regional first robotics competition. During the competition, they didn't just have to demonstrate engineering excellence. They also had to come overcome parents and students shouting at them to go back to Mexico. These were elementary kids, just nine and 10 years old. And they were being trained by society that instead of building robots, the best robots they could, in a nation with amazing robotics programs that instead of doing science, instead of building robots, they should go back to Mexico, a country they didn't even know. This is wrong, and we must change this. Yeah. Yeah. Science needs all society, and we must actively welcome diversity and squash hate. There is no room for hate in science. All races, all genders, and all orientations, and all kinds, able-bodied and not, religious and not, all are needed, and it's through our diversity of perspectives, inspirations, and genius that we will advance science. Intolerance will not be accepted. Our biases will be acknowledged. We will work to do better, to actively be better, and to keep improving our fields until our scientists reflect the society they are advancing. We will change our science field to reflect our society. You are here because you want to see these advances. You want to make these advances a reality. And for you to see, see the science, we must do our research in the open. I am proud to have spent much of my career working with NASA and being not only able to, but required to share my science widely and freely with the public. We are here because we demand that work being done with federal funds must be made freely and fully available to all. Researchers should not be asked to hide their results behind firewalls, and they should not see their discoveries censored because they might be bad for somebody's political agenda. Forecasts for rising sea levels don't care which candidate you voted for. My lungs 
lungs demand clean air. My lips demand clean water to drink. I demand data to be released so that we can make informed decisions as voters, as consumers, and as compassionate human beings. We demand open access to data and research results, but that alone is not enough. With understanding comes responsibility. We demand that our government base policies and regulations on our best scientific understandings. Yeah. On this day in 2016, the Paris Agreement was signed by 194 UN member states. The international document calls for a decrease in the emission of greenhouse gases. This international document called and works toward finding ways to combat climate change and to mitigate the devastating harm in many nations of the globe. Do you, when we would turn on the news and see the images of the hole in the ozone layer over the Arctic, declared the chemicals response would be phased out, ratified by 197 nations. This agreement forced us to change the chemicals in our refrigerators, in our air conditioners. It made us change forced us to change a lot of economy. Possible if we were and data driven. Today there is concern the United States will set aside our commitments to the environment. These are not data driven decisions. Act and enforce. Sakta's economy and this is right for humanity. Science is right for humanity. Yeah. Science is a human endeavor. We will fail. We will make mistakes. We will go down rabbit holes that we so make extraordinary decisions. are enabled to do all of us working to get research open to all and make federal policies that are informed by research. Yeah. We are that global community. That is us. We will not be silenced. We will let science Great. Thank you.